for this game. But will the response from Wonder... Oh, it's going to be the Wukong top. Okay. okay. We just talked about how Wukong did receive some uh, buffs specifically towards trying to help out his top lane. They sure, changed that one. Often I'll see junglers, especially when they're walking over vision like they just did, smite to make sure they secure the first one because you get a lot of decent XP. And that's way exactly across as well as Zvairu tries to join the fray. Flashes away from the seismic shove. Flackard now joining the fight against the Drake. It's PVE for Yankos, Trimby and Flackard and they'll secure it. They kill the mob. Uh, the oh, big look at the level difference here. Yankos with six, but uh, Stags Daglas, is fine. If he leeches two minions, I think he gets six off this, but the minions aren't going to die because Wanda goes in immediately. Stun card locked onto him. Yankos joining the fray as Daglas has no flash to get out of this one. Cyclone for the knockup, permafrost for the stun, Glacial Prism for the follow up, and first blood is done. For the gold card locks it in, hits Wanda with it, but. The wave's under tower now. Wonder looks for the cyclone, goes in. First one, no flash for him. Daglas gets the stun with a shadowing strike. The Yankos is on his way. TP in as Heretic starts to invest in the play. Wonder uses the second cast of the cyclone and Trimby. Now going to look to lock up Daglas. The Magna Storm is only a magnet for Heretics as they lock him down and shut out Daglas from the play. I feel like what we're seeing is a situation where Vitality can only find opportunities on the top side of the map. But because of Wukong and uh, Sejuani, they're just winning out on a lot of these 2v2s. Now they're going for the dive. It's a full-on submarine play, Unbreakable down. Photon locked up by Trimby. Hillisang trying to survive under the tower. Yankos flashes away. Who's tanking next? It's Wonder. Yankos takes the kill, doesn't fall. As it was written for Heretics. Lisan al -Kaib for Yankos as he gets another, but Vitio. Yankos was the one getting all the kills. He's a thousand gold up, but Vitio is now 300 gold up in his lane because he was able to get the shot down on Yankos. Now Trimby's caught out, Daglas jumping in. The TP invested by Wonder is he's going to join the fray. Photon doesn't have a TP to answer, and once again, Daglas is left legless as Vitality leave him for dust. Well, Photon should be able to secure a number of plates on the top side of the map here, Lee. what are you. That's so greedy from Hilly. He puts up the unbreakable. They're actually going to kill off Trimby. Okay, maybe it wasn't. I'm sorry, I doubted you, Hilly. Once again, the prophecies are true. He's inting, but apparently that's what he wanted all along. Yeah, that was part of his master plan. Subverting expectations. You never really know. He's the die gone. underneath that tower. Photon backed off, so you can't lift held charges in mid, and this will likely be a lot of damage on the tower. Not quite falling. Gates your prison hitting. As Daglas once again caught out a little bit, does still have the flash, but he's locked up by Trimby, and Daglas goes down. Flackett with his second kill. Oh, so it was still healthy enough to weather the pressure from Vitality, and then with the collapse from Trimby, they could turn that into a re-engage. So just good awareness from Heretics. They get themselves their first tower by knocking down this bot tier one. Mid is likely to fall soon. We can see when we look at the minimap that uh, the virus isn't anywhere near for the time being this mid lane. So Kazi should be able to just knock this one down. Objective traded. Jungle makes it harder for them to approach. You see them overstacking on the mid wave to try and gain control. Hilly, go with the hook. Glacial Fisher going down. There's the Destiny TP in, but already Trimby very low. Gets the Titan's Wrath shield, but it's not enough. Daglas flashes away as Wonder looked for the play with the TP in. Destiny Trimby now rejoining the fray. There's the teleport in. Wonder spotted on a ward. The dragon down to a thousand should be secured by Yankos. The smite gets it. And Wonder backs away with the promise his HP was already at half, yeah. right? So he didn't quite have the HP to face check once again. Even though he was testing the warders a little bit, the moment that that's down towards that bottom side, Photon needs to be able to react to any play that might erupt. Zvairu, the first target here, flashes away, stunned with the concussive blows. There's Magnus Storm as well. And for the first time, Zvairu falls on the LEC stage. Harry as well with Photon. BTO can shred through it. It's down to 6,000. Yankos can look for the seal. Flash smite Yankos available to so him. so healthy though. He feels very confident walking up the poke Boat comes on, through. Flashes, Glacial Prison goes wide. Chain of Corruption used as well as they engage Wonder. onto Yankos. The knockback. Yankos falling lower. He flashes away. Daglas, though, might be the first to fall in the fight. The Cyclone on the back line from Wonder is perfect. He decoyed them all and he deceived them as they thought he was in their midst, but instead he's managed to dodge away. And now with no jungler, can Vitality continue to fight this? Heretic should secure it. Yankos with the smite gets it. First to fall is Trimby. Yankos dashes across the wall. Wonder does the same. And Heretics have just pulled off the heist. Now that Spyro has rejoined the fight, he can can contribute to that poke, and they're able to secure the Baron. And now the Drake's up in four seconds. Mom being called down. Trimby, the first to be locked up. Chain of Corruption goes down as well as Photon locks in the gold card, and Trimby is shut out of the fight. The blue secured. Smite used, though, by Yankos means he won't have it if they try and fight around this Drake. Could be the 15-second cooldown. Maybe they can delay for long enough. 8,000 HP on the Dragon would be sold for Yankos and Heretics if they secure it. Wonder coming in. The Weaver's Wall separates Flackett away from the fight, though. Wonder dashing forward. Locked up immediately. Gets the Cyclone off and manages to kill off Hillisang, but he falls for it. Yankos now has his smite back up. Photon looking for flank position as Heretics step into a 3v4. 
The control ward this in the poke bush, is so he... important. Spyro and Flacken need to land it if they want to secure this dragon. Can Daglos Q smite? He can't. Well, he can, but Vito gets it. Kazi now trying to open up. Can't quite get the autos down. Flacken with the cleanse. Look at Trimby, though. He's joining from the top side of this fight. And Kazi doesn't have flash. Can Trimby get in range? Not quite for Kazi. Instead, he issue we mentioned for Heretics that is starting to really rear its head now is just how strong Vitality can become as the game goes on. Kazi sitting at 290 stacks. The Execute Threshold only gets higher the more stacks he gets. Increases by 1% of their opposition's max HP per 40 stacks he has. So it's only getting higher and higher. Yankos has Anathema's Knight's Vow, so he is a very tanky uh, woman on a boar. Yeah. Very well as the Heretic's top laner. Dagla stepping forward, Trimby with the hook once again. There's a slight clone. Destiny popped, Hillisang trying to keep Flackhead and Yankos at bay. Photon dashes in, Flackhead able to get away from it. Didn't lock in the gold card there, no one dies. So Vitality ends up finding another kill. They finally equalize the kill score. Ooh. Photon has flash, dashes away from Yankos. There's the TP. Photon needs to get away from this permafrost. One more order is enough to stun him up. Yankos locks him in place and Svaru is here. The chains will land and Photon will fall. Svaru with his first kill on the LEC stage. Well, he does commit the TP here. It means that there's a little less global pressure on the side of Heretics. He's down to 9,000, but I don't know if it gets low enough in time. Yankos still has the flash. VCO on the front line. There's Mom coming down. Yankos doesn't take too much damage. Glacial Fisher used, hits onto Hillisang. The smite secure from Daglas as Wonder dives onto the back line. But now, Kazi can really open up. And the chicken nuggies have arrived for him. Mom delivers as Kazi takes a kill. Photon with the flash forward. Svaru with the flash away. But the chase continues as Kazi gets his second. Trimby trying to flash away himself as well. Photon locks the Gold card and locks Trimby in place. The dredge line misses the wall as Kazi gets his third of the fight. 7 0 3 for our first smolder of spring. Kazi is unleashed. He is becoming the evolved dragon, and Vitality, Vitality is now firmly in control. We talked about how threatening this team can be when they get to a certain point in the game. This may have been all Vitality needed to turn this game around. Let's cloak to buff up his damage. Mom called down, really just to push him out of gas in terms of chasing onto Vitality. VTO going towards mid lane as Photon's there as well. VTO just covering, clears out this control ward. Photon opens up on the inhibitor and it's down in about eight or nine auto attacks. And now, does Vitality ever want to approach the bot lane? Probably not. The minion wave pushed all the way to Ooh, their T2. They damage. don't care about it. As you say, big damage on Kazi, but he has Hillisang as the front line. Death Charge gonna land onto Kazi. There's the Magnus Storm as well. All they're doing is buying as much time for the Dragon to unleash Hell once again. Heretics are diving into it, and there are bile spitters here as Kazi able to find another with his team. The Baron expires, but there's another minion wave coming in. Heretics going to try and reset, maybe get back here in time, but I don't know if they'll be there quick enough to defend their inhibitor tower. I like the fight from Heretics, but uh, it looks like that it's not going to be enough. Another tower falls, and I think this should of be... their maximum HP, yeah. They're below, so... All they have to do is We're not fall behind out. 13%. I think they might just die before they have an opportunity to react. Flacker didn't have a chance in hell of surviving that, nor did Trimby. Weaver's wall in by VTO, flash forward by Photon. Yankos now locked up with a stun card. Wonder trying to dash back in, but he'll be next up on the menu for Kazi. He flashes away and Yankos survives for a moment until Photon catches him under his Nexus Towers. Wonder trying to survive as well, but in the end, he will die alongside his comrades. Fizio and Vitality clean up the ace, and they're looking for their first win of sprint. A strong start to the split for Vitality, a very different gonna look die. from what we saw in winter. I wouldn't be hilly without chucking an extra death in there to round out the game. Smiles on the faces of Vitality, some frustration on the side of Heretics, but they're going to lock down their first win of spring. And in convincing fashion as well. The early game, more Heretics favored. Yankos did a really playing the most he ever has over the last few months. Did go to Korea for a boost camp as well. And Ude, one of those champions, you do need the repetitions in. You do need to have practiced him to really utilize him to his greatest effect. Funnily enough, when he came on the... By uh, Razork and Marku, I'm going to look to try and clear things up. Well, Finn, go for a dive. When they get level six, right? You, you have sure. Fate's Call, you have Cease and Desist from Marku. It becomes a lot easier for them to actually enact. I think that Fnatic's damage should be fine. I think that the, the scariest point is like these first item spikes. Glacier Prison, Larson has no flash. Remember, Seismic Shove gets him back, and Fnatic 
get first blood. I mean, that was such a clean play from Fnatic. Very little to break down there. Larson didn't have a slash from the earlier fight. Noah's going for this. Lightning Crash. He can chase Com down. Com has the cleanse, but it's not really going to help you in this 1v1. The spears go in, but Noah should secure it. He flashes, the spear misses, and Noah takes it. A solo kill in the bot lane for him. Now, this is some bad news for Rogue, because your early game win condition was playing through this bot side of the map, and Fnatic's AD carry just 1v1 killed your AD carry. Great stuff from Noah. Side Razzle gone his way across as well as Finn trades into Oscar Rinnan, but even with the Iceborne depth charge out, Zoelise does have the face call to pull him out, but now Comp tanking the tower. The cleanse doesn't get you away as Jun takes the kill, and Rogue over invests in the bot lane, and now it's disaster for them. We thought perhaps it would be a more aggressive Rogue, but we didn't want it to go this way. A double for Humanoid. He looks for more. Larson has the flash, the fear as well to keep him safe for now. 5-0 for Fnatic. Only Finn winning out in terms of gold now. He'll get another play, but Oscar in and just keeping him at bay for the moment. The tower takes a chunk, the path maker out. Finn forced away from the turret. I mean, this is the type of... But you can see why it happened for Rogue. They're like, hey guys, we just lost a 1v1 bot. We need to shut down this area. We need to get kills into the cluster. So let's force a play. It goes entirely awry, but at least you understand where the mentality was from them. TP now in as they look to force another. Raz was going to secure the dragon first of the game. Too far forward. You're playing in the mind of Fnatic, where Fnatic are thinking, well, Finn's probably reset to go and catch that bot wave that's been pushed in by Noah. But Fnatic play it safe. They accept that the tower is going to fall. They're getting a tower in response anyway. They don't overstep, and because of that, Rogue can't punish them. I mean, they know that Rogue jungle. The problem for Fnatic is Rogue not had a base, whereas you have it. So yep. in terms of gold spent, you're not going to be in a great position. So they commit the vision away from the minions so that Finn can't actually clear that one out. And they do secure that objective. And you look at the rest of the map, Rogue isn't doing anything. I think it's the front line, face checking with this team, forcing Fnatic out of the river and clearing what vision they can. Oscar They've... was top here. Jun's going to get hooked out. Oscar TP's in behind. Finn separated from the team. Fnatic will be five man grouped up as Humanoid keeps Finn away. But Rogue might have an opportunity to get in here. Finn trying to get away. Oscar in with the flank. Pathmaker gets the stun into the wall. And Finn, as tanky as he is, will fall. The flank from Oscar Rinnan should unlock the dragon and this bot tier two. But Rogue are making a beeline towards the Baron. They've pushed in this mid wave. They know that Razok is still on the dragon and they're going to try Good and force call. this objective. Or oh, are they? Maybe they're, they're going to try and make. Because they know because they got the, the Scuttle Crab, they know there's no Fnatic vision there. Because it would have been highlighted sure, by that Scuttle Crab. That's true. So they're trying to pull Fnatic into thinking that they're doing the bam. And Oscar winning the one to base check as he should be at being at the tank. Gets a good Q3, not back. Noah dashing in with a oh. lightning crash. Sees the desist as Shun dives onto the back line. Larson though, knocked back. Marcoon has the flash and the seismic shove to end Rogue's lives. Comp dies. In the end, Rogue get one out of it. The Rel will fall, but Fnatic get three. And perhaps on top of it, a Baron to boot. Him and Noah are able to clean things up, and uh, that's a Baron secured for Fnatic. I think he's been stealing jungle camps as well. Have we ever seen Human and Chovy in the same room? Just I've never seen them in the same room, that's one for sure. One earlier today, he's going to win now again, apparently, as the tier one falls in the middle. The second control But are ward. they scared of him? Really? He's a, he's a man bear pig, Betty. You've got to be scared is. of the man bear pig. Here he comes. Here he comes. Gets a stun, goes in. They're looking for what could be a final fight here as Finn gets onto the back line. He's doing a lot of damage and Jun will fall. Spy running despair coming in. Finn goes down. One for one so far. Another hook onto Razzle. Pulled back with a grasping more. And Fnatic are hurting. Fnatic are weak. At least in terms of health right now, it's Humanoid. Gets hooked, gets pulled back. Marcoon looks for Oscar in. No season desist on the buy. Path maker out by Oscar, but the chase continues. And this is where Huey really shines. Searing bolt from the skies, pulls down Oscar. Knocked up, locked up, and he's shut out of the fight. Three, four. Health bars are too low to continue the fight, and Rogue can punish them. A nice fight from Rogue. To give them a push through mid if you really want, just go for the inhib. But instead, Fnatic are looking for this soul. There's the Weaver's Wall. Will lock Rogue in spot. The Magnet Storm out as well as Humanoid dives onto the back line. Larson tried to do the damage as Finn tanks up the rest of Fnatic, but he can't tank them for that long. Comp, Zoelise, and Larson left alone down towards this bottom side as Razzle dives in. Comp dashing around the path maker all out, and Comp falls to Oscar in. And Larson fears him away, but it's not going to be enough to do anything more. He's hunting for Jensen. Unlikely that Oscar Jensen? will be able. Jensen Larson, my apologies. Larson, my apologies. Oscar on the hunt. 
He's just trying to stop him from basing so that there's no wave clip. And Fnatic can look to end the game right here, right now. One messy fight from Fnatic, but the incarnation of victory is here for them. And they will claim their first win of Spring. Not many people are going to get that, but no, I got that. that. Nice one. Right? I got that one. Nice, nice little... Oh. Oh, uh, cherry on Bolly. the... Ooh. Okay, super interesting. Gets prior a lot early game. Bolly recently been That's popping up a That's pretty good, more. yeah. Into, into Poppy Aatrox, kind of, and he got buffed so much. Yeah, wins right. every match. See if maybe they can get a bit of an advantage here. Mm -hmm. Alright, then on that, Rob is going to be caught out. Mickey, not the start of the game that he was looking for. Unbreakable. Fading away, the flash in. A little wall bang coming out. Quick first blood for... It does feel like League is starting to turn into a little bit of like, oh, McDonald's farm. Because <laughs> we've got like, Zeri who inevitably will bring Yumi the cast. We've yep. now got a bear in it. We've also yep. got a dragon in it. It just feels like this weird mythical lady, farm that we're going to. Yeah. Dragon. Yeah. I want a panda chain. Why do we get baby dragon? Where's our baby panda chain? Everybody where's baby Kung Fu Panda? Yeah, where's Kung Fu Panda? Why is it Jack Black in League of Legends? Yeah. These are the questions that keep me up at night. That and how are Ice and LeBron really going to stop Smolder from scaling? Because I don't want to overplay it here. But again, the hotfix was pretty massive. And we are pre-hotfix. That said, a dive would be a great way to do it. Hansama knock back at the wall. That's clean. And the flick back, not going to miss this time. The back here, he doesn't really have any coverage. But he feels confident they can get it. Nuke, the charm going to connect this time. There's just no counterplay. Double flick back does not matter. Yikes. Just to try to contest. Not even really have access to the sure thing. Mickey stepping forward to body block. Ice. Shark laser over the wall. TV now coming in. G2 want to force the fight here. They think they found the angle. Nuke, though, is going to see Broke Blade now coming in. Going to try to stop the boulder following up, getting the impact wall. Isn't really effective here. Knockback is there. Caps still has a dash forward, but LeBron. Sidestep coming in, Mew on the top side, Adam not committing the TP, doesn't have access to it. Instead, going to be focused on trying to knock down as many plates as possible. But that bear does not care. There he goes. Oh, yike! The hard reads coming in. Considering Mickey there as well. Maybe trying to go for a fast play here on to Adam. BDS, though, first access here, not great vision coverage from G2. Don't really have concrete information on where Talia is. She's backing, but in the fog of war, so G2 are still going to risk it anyway. Confident enough to step forward, Caps. Ready to dash forward. Q flash forward from Mickey. That's the lock up there. LeBrov again buffering on the hook. The kickback is clean though on Desheo. Another dash coming in for Castle. Rob likely to fall as well. Yike on a killing spree. You heard it from Razork on the desk. If you're good enough, at least then you can make it work. And G2 are making it. Got the numbers advantage there. And BDS are in an awkward spot. But now, let's see if they can catch Sheo. Just gets stunned. The bear has been sent packing. But Sheo instantly going to get knocked up. And uh, yep, yeah, that's a very strong Lee Sin. Early Eclipse going to make sure the damage is there. Chaos still running, though. Still tanky. Nuke doing whatever he can to fire back, but it's not nearly enough. And here comes the bear, baby. Wall coming out as well. I don't know if you've seen Cocaine Bear, but this and is... now they guarantee themselves the card off the numbers play as well. They keep moving in. Just control a bit of vision. Adam, very diligent in not being spotted, but just the edge of the sweeper is going to catch him out. They know he's right there. Harold will drop in favor of G2. Nuke is able to push that wave in on the bottom side. Maybe can start to move up. It's 14 seconds till the Drake. Okay, oh, nice waiting together, looking for some good damage on Mickey. Unbreakable there, he can just dash away. Buy a bit more time. Yike in the area too, have to be careful. D2 backing off. BDS should just be able to break mid here if they want to commit. D2 potentially a little bit over eager here. They are going to end up losing mid lane tower. BDS, do they have enough of an advantage to transition this to Drake? It looks like he is on Adam. Caps trying to keep this one going. One dash, dash in, waiting on the charm. Waiting until the angle is right, dashing in, not giving Adam any room to maneuver. Finally going to connect on that one. Yike moving in. Should just be an easy finish here. Adam trying to turn it back though, healing so much. But still, Caps able to clear up that kill. BDS grabbing the Brokeload will be able to grab this tower. Should just back away after, but if he overcommits, BDS might be able to punish. <laughs> so I just noticed, I think BB forgot. So this guy and the Eclipse now picked up is very strong. He finds the 1v1. But speaking right. of, Caps gonna hit the charm. Unraveled Earth does not matter. The Caps just gonna keep Ooh. dancing around him, but there's LeBron the flash, and he gets the kill. Now he has one more dash. He can get back. BDS are committing everything. Counter punch from G2 in the mid lane. They're gonna be able to grab a tower back, but that is a huge shutdown for BDS. I mean, it's a one for one in the top side. So you're kind of happy as that is Caps, and you're gonna get the mid lane turret. Yes, he traded for the top side, but mid turret is always more valuable in these kind of scenarios. Yes, you can see G2 slowly choking out BDS vision on the top side. It's gonna make it so hard to make good decisions. Caps dashing in. The charm still gonna connect Spike Shield's intervention. Caps still stand, and here comes Mom, baby. Chor's not done for BDS, they're sent home. 
They were not allowed out to play. The mama bear called the related mom jokes, but for now you'll suffer through just as we suffer through this smolder. BDS might have to suffer against a bear duck G2 who aren't interested in the purple worm. Instead, interested in getting a few more kills under their belt because the blow stack now coming in. Ice looking for the ball, caps off to the side. Ice now trying to turn, keep your eyes on that Zeri. It has to be all about ice, but already the front line falling apart. Nuke, the flick back on the three is everything. He got it. In the moment, Nuke now chasing through. It's BDS. Do they want to start at the worm? Be huge for this squad. I'm that was insane! Late game terror, three items for ice. And this is now where we gotta see if BDS are gonna be able to use this part. Because one of the big things that we talk about a lot with BDS is, look, their team fighting is exceptional. This is a team that is the best at macro in our league. Yep. And if BDS can out maneuver and out think G2 on the map with this barn, this is where they can close out this game. Caps, of course, left to the bottom side of the map. You can see Adam debating the recall there if he needed to respond to that play. That's where he starts with the execute. Just hit like a truck. Caps taking a bit of a chunk here. Unbreakable from Mickey. Shayo just happy to get that cooldown. Nice heads up play. Doesn't commit the ultimate quite yet, but Adam is now going to be in trouble. Dash back to safety. Ultimate immediately coming out. Mom makes a brief appearance, but not for too long here as BDS are now on their tree. G2 still incredibly powerful overall. BDS can make a fight. Ice untouched for now. The bear leaping in. The bear leaping out. Shut down for Adam. Ice, a little parkour over the wall. Nice size up on the charm as well. Hansama. Play forcing in that top wave, so someone will be required to respond on the side of BDS eventually, but for now, this play going in their favor. Yep, there it is, Sonic Wave right into the charm. G2 find the angle, four clicks, four pick. Shea ulti now coming out, so LeBron gone. This lap roll bolt's been not quite up and available, but if they can slow down the pace, maybe they can Shea get in, but here so it comes. low. This is dangerous, Cap off to the side, not in the best flank position. LeBron gonna try and spot him out, 4K getting lower and lower. Nuke laying down the wall, it's a little bit of setup, but the objective should just go to the side of G2. Can they steal it away? No, yikes, securing it. Nuke untouched, Ice laying down a little bit of damage. Hansama throwing down a little bit more to respond though, but Ice is still standing, keep your eyes on the Zeri, that's big. Caps off to the side, looking for the charm. One more dash in, can he find it? Ice, the charm connects. Mickey, the immediate follow-up with the parkour now coming in. Mom getting called in one more time, and there's Hansama. Flap, flap, flapping all over Adam, unstoppable now. BDS on the run. But as long as Ice is up, there's hope. The Baron already over, but Caps! He flashed over the wall to seal the deal. That's 180 carry down and dusted. Nuke trying desperately to hold on to this. Hansama thinking of going over the wall to see if he can pick off Nuke, but everyone's going to back away. Baron for G2. Big boulder thrown into space. It's G2 walking up, using the unbreakable. Shao again just kind of faking with the challenge there. Braum making it so difficult for him to really find out. Disappear up onto that top end, just try and alleviate some of the pressure. And it just feels like G2 reckon a stopwatch in terms of the raw power it could provide in a fight. Mickey though. Knock up there, Unbreakable again, buying a bit more space. Broken Blade isolated on the backside. Sky Splitter doing good damage, and a bit more poke onto Shao. Mickey now following, knock up. Mom making her way into the fight, not really gonna connect to anyone. Shao fishing for the knockback is gonna take one at least out of the fight. Yike pushed away briefly, but BDS losing a lot of their health just to walk into their own jungle. They're trying desperately to do anything, but G2, as we said, have already established, and those corridors are perfect for what G2 are trying to achieve with this composition. So BDS force back. Yeah, they're going to try and re-establish themselves in River, but who wants to face tank this? And Dragon, I sorry, Baron may even be gone already. Caps off to the side, looking for the flank on the nuke, pressuring him, stopping until he can be able to do anything. The Unraveled Earth goes down, but Broken Blade just in the midst of the back line, and Hansama, the knock up's there, but there's absolutely no ball. The Smolder just gets to keep doing whatever the hell he pleases. Ice doing some good damage here, but Yike fishing for the back side of the fight. He just gets taken down. It's Ice and Caps, though. 1v1, but now Hansama's coming in as well. There's just nowhere for Ice to go. Oh, it's Randy, happening. It's not enough to it's quadrant. happening. Give it to him. Flap, 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 baby. That's a baby dragon, and that's a pentakill. Mom, are you watching? It's happening. Sama popping off with the Smolder Pentakill for the G2 bot lane. What a way for Smolder to enter into the LEC. Yeah, you heard of Mom's spaghetti, but that's Mommy's too damn Betty. <laughs> <laughs> Smolder doing Smolder things. Just spitting on him, sneezing on him. G2 reminding us why the pick is so incredibly powerful. A well played game. G2 finding their first win of the spring split. <laughs> G2 finding success on the... See the concussive blows when you have a Zen already, feels good, oh. but Rel, making it very far in the draft, will be the lock-in here. So, Rel yeah. support into the Nautilus, you saw in our, one of our previous games today that it is, it's a solid, you know, matchup you can cancel a lot. Yes, which you can use to get over the that right-hand side wall, so they're trying to do it before he hits level three. Oh, now walking in, Ignar gonna do what he can to disrupt. Ballbreaker charge up the flash forward in, upside now laying down a lot of damage, he might be able to get one, that's one already. Ignar trying to, trying to get a kill back, flash up from Dargo, he hooks back in! Does Level 6 is now coming in. 
Of course, as we highlighted previously, Jackie is forced out of lane first, but taking has to spend a bit too much time pushing out. All of Casey's resources are on the bottom side right now, so there's no dive threat on Oda. He's not forced to use that team. So that's what Carmen Corp are kind of saying, hey, we're going to play aggressive and push you off because Zeri could be here. Now, though, with the pressure on the top side, might nice be a bit more hook onto Peach. Oda Wamne on the way in. Severin Bolt not going to do much of anything. Again, this inbind so much space with that ultimate. Peach now taking down the kill onto Bo. Casey a little over eager to force here. A moment yeah, instead. They end up just giving a kill over and trying next get all six of those groups that we were talking about. Yeah, and a reminder is going well, to the top side is like you oh. can't hit the front line and then smoulders in the back. Hit. <laughs> try and bully this off. Are they going to stick around just to try to go for the smite? The answer is yes. Peach though just over committing. Mom on the way in, but Mom not doing a whole hell of a lot. And meanwhile, Peach now going to be in trouble. One kill coming through. Root now coming from Jackie's on the backside. Meanwhile, Cabo trying to move in, but a queen flash out from Patrick means he's still standing. But upset, taking over the fight in the meantime. Oda Wamne is in the area as well. TP now coming down to the bottom lane. Jackie's going to get hooked up here. Oh, just gift wraps a kill. That. What is going on in this game? Pushback, Cabo there now in the midst of the 3v1. Patrick just desperate to pick up a few more stacks and maybe a kill as well. Disengage now coming from Oda Wamne to buy a bit more space. Cabo still sitting pretty here. Peach gonna try to finish this kill up. Will find one, but now he's gonna give his life in the meantime. Mom getting called, but it's too little too late. That was a very risky TP from Jackie's. Like trying to move down from the top side, cool. You wanna try and contest with the dragon. All well and good. Collapse in a mid, they're just using the fact that they've got so much push inside lanes to guarantee these objectives and are moving. They still manage to get it taken. He's going to take this top side. You can then reset and be in a position where, hey, we're going to be able to come out, get some vision down for Dragon. I think Soul. John X's next Dragon doesn't matter. So you have kind of your pick of the litter when it comes to these major objectives. You've got Azeri. You've got a Vi and an R as well. You can do good work, but Bo caught out here. Potentially going to be in trouble. Crash down now coming in, unstoppable for Rebo and Bo trying to make it out of safety. Flash, ball breaker, he's still living! Mom on the way in! Mom gonna finish the job! Oh, walking this far forward, he doesn't have perfect information on the enemy team. Ooh, target is... Waiting for the third strike, one knock, I'm now gonna come in, Upset trying to respond. Flat, flat, flat coming in from Patrick, he doesn't quite make it over the wall. Bo now gonna be in trouble, Upset flashing out. Upset has lost so much HP before this fight, he's really even started. Continuing to try to rain down a little bit more damage, but here comes Mom one more time! Severing Bolt, good damage onto Ignar. KC trying to follow up, trying to win the fight, but Cabo's all on his lonesome on that front line. Saken, a little bit exposed here. Patrick just continuing to throw down little fireballs. He's been caught out, spiraling despair. There's the follow-up, no flash for Patrick. The job finished by Saken as he finds the kill. Upset resetting, zooming now out of base. KC can just go straight for the soul. Odawamne running, Saken fishing, trying to finish off the kill. The pullback is there, Cabo gets it, and KC... Saken making massive moves there to carry that fight for his team. Giant X got the damage into Upset, but watch where Upset repositions to. But Upset then position over the wall, actually. We're not going to get to we're see his time. Ignar. Ignar caught out. Excellent start. Upset coming over the wall, though. Has the entire team to cover him. I mean, they've got Hex. Winter, they didn't pick up a win until the very last week. And it was a bit of an easier start for them. They end up with G2 Fnatic as their first two setups for to try and cover bot side, so Cabo just going to keep on pushing. And Giant X know that they, they don't really have an option. They have to commit a man advantage if they want to even threaten. So, <laughs> yeah, focus down. Uh, yeah, Patrick continuing to sneeze. Casey have enough time left on the Baron. They will be able to knock down that tier two. You don't have the numbers advantage here, so Carmen Corp will actually get the terror, but there was a, a moment there where Giant, so Giant X feeling happy to just step up here. As long as you can keep that poach coming, poke coming down from Patrick, I know some Jackie's are in a good spot. Looking on to Ignar. Peach now trying to follow up. Mom coming down. Say so can slow it up at least a little bit. Tarkman's going to get the ult off, but he's burning. He's ticking. There's no damage coming in from Patrick. However, soon won't get executed. Ulti now going in on the Peach. Bo wants to finish the job. Patrick still on the backside uncontested. Bo now flashing back over the wall. To Ignar, he's gonna give his life in the exchange. No jungler up, but no, Bo is still living. Patrick is forced to flash in. Bo is still alive! He just popped so much space. Giant X might have gotten the jungler and gotten out. Scott Freeman now is upset on cleanup duty. Severing Bolt coming in will not find a target. Upset. And Carmen Corp will net themselves the Elder Dragon. Right, so it's like, man, try not soul, excuse me, Elder Buff. Yeah, this is kind of the. The doom scenario here for Giant, Giant X base here. And I think really big credit to Casey, especially in the early game, for limiting the stacking of Patrick for no playing, his ability to spike in this game. Very well done. Yes, it was very scrappy, it was very messy in the mid game, but Casey, once they've gotten this big lead, have really not given Giant X too many avenues to come back to the game. Mom is here. Mom does not do nearly as much against Baron Minions. Peach 
Looking for the pushback. One tower taken down. Upset untouched for now. Ulti now coming up for Vanguard, but there's absolutely no follow up. He just buys a bit more space for the rest of the team. Bo might give his life, but Bo's still alive for too damn long. Finally, the execute will come through. Triple coming in for Upset. And Spring starting so much better for Carmine and Corp. That's their first win on the board. May not have been the cleanest. He's getting some really nice buffs coming into this patch. Like, Mana Regen is up, and um, a bit of damage up as well. And most of them is E-Rooting. There's a lot of just nice things that Jace has managed to pick up on this. Uh... They're not going to be really be able to walk forward. That wave is stacking, and we'll push in. But Super not going to be able to push it for a brief moment. Is Irrelevant now in trouble. Three members on the top side. That is going to cost him his life. Irrelevant. Just get knocked down here. Gold card locked in. Kill gonna come through. Mirror one picking that one up. And first, in yep. trade for the uh, void grubs that are taken from Mioya on the top side. Avoiding the vision of Scuttle Crab, of course. Now the notification will come through that the grubs have been taken. Although there was already a ward there from SK, so they had relatively perfect information. SK still doing what he can to try to keep Supa off some of these creeps. It, if with this game, though, it feels like whoever kind of gets these early uh, leads is going to be able to snowball incredibly well, right? You've got both sides wanting to try and play at side lanes. Oyoya going to face check here. Right there. Oyoya, Ball Breaker going to get interrupted. There should just be a quick and easy kill pick of Oyoya. Flashing back to safety. Needs a bit more time for the Ball Breaker. Nice wall coming from Briscow. Indiski immediately going to fall off, though. Dashing in, finding the charm. That's the angle, but he goes back into the Unraveled Earth. Briscow is still living for far too long, and Supa is untouched. That's not the lethality of ours. It's lethal tempo. It's Isma here. Isma, prepping the three talent strike. Going in on El Yoya. Flashing forward to block the ball breaker. Really confident they've got the damage to make this work. Excellent use of the ulti to stop Rescali from contributing. Shut down on El Yoya. Big passive, so irrelevant. Despite the success of the early gank on the top side. Not much. Goes in with the gold card. Rescali now looking to follow up. Irrelevant. When he can form swap, gets a bit more movement. So he's trying to sidestep on the unraveled earth. He is going to get knocked back there. Gold card now coming in from here when irrelevant. Should just fall here. Big pick for the side of Mad Lions Koi. Now Supa, Ulti Alvaro. coming out, Ghost still there, Alvaro can stop any potential follow-up, there's no play to be had here, and Doss steps a little bit too far forward to walk around the wall, luckily the hook can take him out to safety, but the alt follow-up is there, Doss thought he had the angle, but Alvaro is there just in the nick of time. Just about able to get in to block everything, and then the setup as well, and now Execute might be in trouble, can Double he open the wall? That's good custom blows! There's no way to get out of this one, Execute running away. Boy, grab have TP, DOS hook, not gonna connect. Alliance Koi, bit of a spectator Drake. Are they willing to commit to the fight here? Everyone walking back up, Mad Lions Koi. Just commit a little resource. Oh yeah, has to be careful here. Hook connects Alvaro there to cover again. Leaps in, unbreakable. Right on time, oh yeah, caught out though. Frescawi, Niski onto the backside. Nice flip back on multiple members. Execute now locked up the Zendana, trying to cover to punish. Multiple members still standing, oh yeah, trying to make it out safety, but it's Niski finding the kill. Super though, ready to fire back. That's one. DOS returned. Niski, one charge. Has to be careful. It's not the Lethality Forest, it's the on hit. Well, it's fantastic foot. Unfortunately, just not quite there for Madeline's court. Yeah, a bit tricky. Throw and now knocking down that top lane tower. We'll see what they want to do on the side of Madeline's court with Mirwin. Where they want to assign him when it comes to lanes and set up. Niski. Hitting the thumbs up. He knows he's on the wrong side of the map. I don't know if that's going to save his life, however. Weaver's wall coming in. Mad Lions Koi want to keep going for this. Unraveled Earth is there, but Niski's just going to walk out. He's finally going to dash. He has just enough time! He's just styling on him. I wasn't going to bring up the rivalry, but now I feel like I might have Distance to. Distance to dash again. Yeah, that, I mean, sloppy. the top buff working. <laughs> in fact, that Mad Lions Koi tried to invest that much into killing the Nari. As he said, Niski in a good spot now in that top end, even with the armor, and may even look to prove it here. Charm connecting. Malignant's there as well. You're going to Destiny Gate out to safety, but I think he's just going to run you down. Niski, three. Oh, feel pretty good in a game like this with so many squishy members on the opposing side. SK moving in. They've got Niski Super. on the Super walking right into the waiting arms of Niski. Surprise, surprise. That's a nine-tailed fox. Super now running, though. He's clean with it. The movement's too good. The sidestep's there. Niski forced to use the stopwatch to buy a brief moment here. The arm guard there, and now Mirwan's ready to follow up. Niski almost had the kill. He should have had the kill. The knockback is there. Mad Lions Koi. Just refuse to give up oh, in the they're, fight. They're pretty good. They have clear early game plans. They're mid game solid. There are some Harold. They can cheat priority a little bit with this push and just break open mid. Yeah, curious to see if they can try and keep the Harold uh, won't get a second chance. Picks off of the push from Super in this jungle. It's going to be massive. Lock up is there. Unbreakable follow up. Flick back as well. Isma in trouble. Trying to make it a safety. Bedelia is there. Cover with the vault breaker. A quick pick and a kill. Donate. Oh, He'll be a top end. It's yeah. going to be fine here. But the terror will fall. 
He'll be able to hop out unless, of course, he runs right into the wall. Luckily for him, there is no follow-up. Some blows makes it very difficult for SK to try and connect. Here we go. Alti over the wall, connecting to Nitsky. Frescali with the flip back. Does he have the damage to finish the kill on his lonesome? It looks like he certainly does, but Nitsky's still dashing, flashing, dashing out again with the gold card! The necessary range, just barely able to get it. But pushing that far instead, they'll be happy enough to just take the objectives for themselves. And Irrelevant will be sent back. Uh, pressure point for them, Dragon in 10 seconds. Amirwin can just look to take pop shots like this. Roots there, but they found the pickoff onto the side. Nitsky again caught out. It was so good early in the game, but now Mad Lions Koyo are ready to punish one dash back to safety. Nitsky's still living! Lock into the Iron Solari just to barely keep him alive. Blinking how far now. Execute is on the chase, and this is how you do it! If you split it up! And Mad Lions Koyo will get their second dragon, but huge play from Nitsky. I cannot believe SK managed to bring that one back. And just a slightly off timing. On the Zanya's Hourglass, 2.5 seconds is burning your brain. Most players get coming out. It's a red card lock. That's a bit of a bit of an oopsie, but I still think it should be enough. Nisky dashing, has Zanya's a little bit of extra movement speed. Elio just waiting. Shouldn't need to use the alt here. Flick back is good from Frescawi. Clean pick on the bottom side. In the meanwhile, SK though immediately going to punish. They have a Baron buff, the tier two, guaranteed. But luckily, the Braum really stopping that mid lane push. Yeah, I mean at least you will still get wood. Force here. Do a battle in the mid lane, though. Alvaro stepping up, cleanse, double value there, but <laughs> not gonna be enough to keep Exekick alive. Hook back from Doss is big, but now Isma's gonna be the one in trouble. Mirror one just jumps in and finds the CC. Nisky over the wall, wants to get a bit more damage back, but it's just not enough. Ilya flashing in because it blows. Man, Braum is powerful. Nisky got no way out that time, and Mirwin hits him with That's the- Wow Arena Classic. They stack their CC, big mistake. No, they still managed to make it happen. Masterfully highlighted. Fire observers. Let's get the answer is no. Gold card onto Exa. El Yo Yo over the wall. Oh no, no, I think we've seen this one before, but this time Exa manages to stay standing. He's just continuing to auto. Exa going over the wall, but he goes right in the waiting arms of Mad Lions Koi. That was too damn far. He could not get away with that one. Red card going in. Wanted to go for gold, but that was nearly going to be a hey look. You know, the first movie works out better than the sequel, but X kick felt like maybe that was his moment that he had to make something happen there. I can sympathize, but the play just does not work out and ends up hastening his own demise, or at least putting Mad Lions Boy that much further ahead. Been neck and neck for a lot of this game, but now it's a 2.5k Red Bull Baron power play. 6k gold advantage to Mad Lions Boy in a slow, steady siege. And he's a little far there. behind. You just don't have... You know, Nisky's holding the baton, praying he has someone to pass it to, and it's just not there. As Exekick once again getting caught out. Isma looks for the fall for now. Exekick, though, remains safe on the backside. Supa now legendary, but the prom just body blocks the autos. And Supa gets to do whatever he damn well pleases. Finally, SK will find the kill. The shutdown is there. Nisky trying to make his way out of safety. No follow-up damage means he gets another charm down. But that's four members of Mad Lions Koi, and Nisky dashes into them. Goes Golden. Gets to see his own demise in slow-mo. It's a double kill for Irrelevant. They're doing good work here. But there's just very little that they can do. Irrelevant can't really get into position because he's just not able to, again, tank Mirwin Stone. It's going to help out quite substantially. Yeah. Oh, no, Mad Lions taking it easy. Big thing, obviously, is Exekick is getting stronger and stronger. Damage down onto Doss has been looking to follow up. If they can catch out Alvaro before a fight starts, it's very good for them. Taking unbreakable out of the equation makes Exekick's life easier, but Isma's already been caught out. Nice blast cone out to safety and a potential pick on the side. Keep your eyes on Supa on the back side of the fight. Flash up from Doss, but he's bringing the bar assault into the rest of his team! That's not what you want to be doing! Supa goes golden, buys that moment. The stun card comes in, the AD carry still standing. Mad Lions Koi tearing SK to pieces. SK tower in their sights, the game win in their hands. Mad Lions, Koi, the final push. They started winter strong. They finished stronger, continuing to rise in the tier list, taking down SK. Well fought in the early to mid from the SK mid jungle, but the later and later we got the more and more Mad Lions, Koi, take over, finding their first win in spring. It was hard fought.